Hey there quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and I thought I would tell you the backstory behind Vacation. She is a sewing machine completely covered in rhinestones, and as you would expect, she has a bit of a story to her. I'll answer the most common questions that I get about her, and while I'm telling the story, I thought that I'd sew together a zippered pouch uh, using the box bag template, because why not multitask? That's what we do as quilters, right? So you ready? Let's get started. Okay, I have turned the sewing machine around so that I can actually use her because that is one of the biggest questions or accusations I get. The question is, is it still usable? Is it still functional? And the answer is yes, absolutely. But one of the biggest accusations I get is, oh my gosh, you've ruined the machine. You can't use it anymore. Um, and I absolutely can and do use her. She travels around with me. I made her in February of 2023 and she has since traveled to multiple states with me and um, has been all over. Now, one thing that I wish I'd done is bling out a machine that has a needle threader because the baby lock zest, which is what this is, the baby lock zest doesn't have a needle threader. So I have to manually thread the needle each time, but that's okay. I learned on an old school sewing machine, so threading a, a needle by hand, not a really big deal. All right, over here on this side, we're gonna be working on making a zippered pouch. If you wanna join along, I have a 12 inch zipper, four pieces of fabric that are each eight by 10 inches, and the lining fabric, eight by 10, the outer fabric, eight by 10, and has been backed with fusel fleece. And we're going to cut uh, one and a half inch box corners on these. Okay, so the story of this machine, first of all, I am a baby lock ambassador. And that means that I have a deal with baby lock where um, I use their machines and there's a contract and there's details of those contracts, but I just use baby lock machines. I love their machines. So this is not a hardship for me at all. Um, so I just use their machines and uh, they sent me several of them as part of the contract. I have a Baby Lock Jubilant, which is what you see in most of my videos. And I had a Baby Lock Aria that has been upgraded to the Baby Lock Ballad. And then I also have a Baby Lock Sashiko machine, which um, was actually not through the Baby Lock contract. It was a gift from my husband because he knew how much I wanted one. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have a whole family of Baby Lock sewing machines. Um, so, it was in 2022 that I actually bought this machine. I was out of town unexpectedly. Um, my dad was hospitalized um, out of town. And so I went to go be with my family at that time. And um, because COVID rules were still in place, I couldn't go in to the hospital room um, to be with him. Um, there was only one person allowed at a time. And obviously those rights went to my mother, um, my dad's wife and my mom. Um, she, she got the right to be in the room. Um, so that meant that my job was to take care of my mom while my mom was taking care of, um, our dad. And, um, so I was at the Airbnb and making sure that we had the Airbnb. Um, I did laundry, I did any groceries. Um, I made sure that my mom had home cooked meals so she wasn't eating a bunch of fast food um, all the time when she was back at the Airbnb in the evenings. Um, yeah, I just made sure that, that the home front was taken care of there and answering any calls from family that could get a hold of me instead of her. Um, that was my job. So um, I didn't, normally I run a business and I have two kids and have a household. Um, so this actually was less work physically, but a lot of work mentally, because there's a lot going on, right? Um, so with all of that mental craziness, I really wanted a project to work on. And I actually had, had committed to um, work on a quilt pattern for a company that I worked with. And um, so I'd made this commitment to make this, this quilt for this company. Um, who I totally could have emailed and said, hey, listen, my dad's in the hospital. Um, I'm not gonna be able to make this deadline. Um, can we please push it? And a thousand percent guaranteed 
the company would have pushed it. They absolutely would have. Um, but I, I needed something to keep my mind busy. And I mean, I'd committed to the project. It wasn't a hard project. It was just a, an easy quilt. So um, I went to the local quilt shop and I picked up a ruler and a mat and a rotary cutter because I had no supplies with me. I didn't know how long I was going to be there when I'd driven out there. Um, so I brought, I bought just the basic supplies that I needed. Um, and I, uh, I bought a sewing machine. Now I'm sure I could have figured out some way to have like a special deal or I don't know some, I, I don't know, but that wasn't what was important at the time. What was important at the time was just getting it done. So, um, I went to the baby lock dealer. I found the local baby lock dealer in Bakersfield and, um, I said, Hey, what is the least expensive baby lock machine that you have? And they said, well, it's this baby lock jubilant. So I went ahead and bought the baby lock jubilant as well as the ruler and the rotary cutter and, um, the fabric that I needed to be able to make my project, um, for the company that I'd committed to making it for. So I went ahead, sorry, the last time this machine was out in public, someone messed with the, um, the, the buttons here. And since I've completely covered them in rhinestones, I don't know exactly what they do anymore. So now every time I start using this machine, I'm a little nervous about her. Okay. So back to the story, which I apologize. I'm now terrible at telling this story. I'm sure lots of you will be in the comments saying, okay, you cannot multitask. Mm, okay. Fair enough. Um, so I went to the store, I bought the machine, I brought it back. Um, I made the quilt that I needed to make. And then, um, the machine ended up coming home with me after um, all was said and done and I went home. Um, and my dad was in the hospital for 10 days and then he he um, was he passed away. He came home and he was able to, to pass that home. Um, so that was hard. Um, so that was, it, it was a difficult time. It was um, not easy for any of us. Um, but I brought the machine home. Um, I did an unboxing video because I figured, you know, how many unboxing videos do I get to do with baby lock machines? Only the ones that they send me are the ones that I buy. And I bought this one, so let me go ahead and do the unboxing video. I did the unboxing video and then the machine, it sat in a corner. I didn't have a lot of space, so I didn't have a space, a space to display it. Um, I had all these other fabulous machines, um, so I didn't really have a use for it at all. Um, what else was I going to do with it? So it, she just, she sat in a corner, um, unused, unloved, without a purpose. So the year goes on, um, that was, um, end of February, early March, the year goes on and the next year, um, I'm launching at, in January, February, um, a new product called the Foundation Piecing Water Pen. And uh, I wanted to bring it with me on a cruise that I was teaching on. So I, um, I had only samples. I didn't have the finished Foundation Piecing Water Pens. So this is the Foundation Piecing Water Pen, and this is the finished version. And it came with um, these stickers that have my logo and information on there. This was the final version of the foundation piecing water pen. But at the time that I was going on the cruise to teach quilting, I only had ones that had just nonsense on the barrel. They were um, samples sent by the factory before the finished samples, before the finished ones. And so I wanted to cover up all that nonsense on the barrel. And I decided, okay, well, I'll cover the barrels with rhinestones. So I had these rhinestone studded pens. Um, and the quilters on the cruise loved them. They were so much fun. It's also really easy to see who had one on their table that I needed to come grab. Um, if someone else needed to borrow them, um, they stood out. So I, uh, um, I covered, I think it was like three or four of them with these rhinestones, um, and I had a good time doing it and it was fun. And then I came back from the cruise and we were coming up on the one year anniversary of my dad's passing. Um, and I was just feeling a little sad, right? All those feelings were coming back of that hard time the year before. Um, I, 
I wanted to lose myself in a project again, but I just, I didn't really feel like sewing. Um, so I thought, okay, well, um, I had this machine that didn't have a purpose and, um, I had just done this thing with these rhinestones. So how hard could it be just to cover a sewing machine with rhinestones, right? Like that's super easy. So I thought that it would just take me a weekend to do and that it would just be a fun, simple, um, quirky thing to take my mind off of, um, you know, the anniversary of my dad's passing. But um, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> did not happen in just a weekend. Um, it did give me something to do um, that was able to keep my mind busy, um, but it did not take a weekend. Um, this was between 80 and 100 hours of work. I did not keep track, um, but it was a lot, a lot of hours of work to get this done. Um, silly me that, do you have this too, where you think it's going to take like 20 minutes and then it takes like hours um yeah that was this project but the first step when you are covering a sewing machine in rhinestones or really anything with rhinestones is you have to sand off the gloss so that um everything the glue will stick because if the surface is fully smooth then when you stick the rhinestones on and the glue, glue dries they'll chip off easier but if you sand it then the glue has that rougher surface to be able to stick into and everything stays much better so I had sanded the whole thing down already. Once you're, once you do that first step of sanding it down, you're committed. There's no turning back. You are, you're, you're now making this project. It's going to happen. Um, so yes, um, I, it took between 80 and hundred hours to finish it. Every single one of these stones is hand applied. Um, because I travel with it and it goes in different suitcases or bags to travel, um, it does on occasion lose some of the rhinestones. I have a little Ziploc baggie, which I don't know, maybe this will be my new kit. I don't, <laughs> but it has a, a baggie, which is my um, repair kit that has extra stones and some glue and a little wax pencil to be able to um, more easily pick up the stones and put them on. But I have that for um when i take with me so usually it's like on the corners specifically like on this front corner right here um i'll lose some of the rhinestones and then i can just repair those um the night before and she's good to go on the day of um so yes sometimes she loses rhinestones um i get a lot of questions about well how do you clean the machine um i haven't had to yet um i am seeing that there's a fair amount of lint down underneath here but, um, so I do have to do a cleaning inside here. Um, but when I put all these rhinestones on, I made sure to go around any seams of the machine so that a tech, while well, the tech may be cursing me the whole time, um, a tech could fully take this machine apart as needed to be able to get in and repair anything. Um, easy enough to do. The logos on here, that's a really interesting, um, story so the this logo that you're seeing here on the back actually doesn't exist on this baby lock brand, this big model of baby lock the logo that is on this side of the machine is actually smaller and right here so i took sandpaper and i completely sanded off the logo there so it wouldn't kind of show up at all between the little gaps in the rhinestones because there are little gaps in the rhinestones but as long as what's behind it is solid you don't really notice it as much um so i sanded it away completely and then I cut out with an electronic cutter, like a cricket machine, I cut out the, um, the logo bigger so that I would be able to put it on the back of the machine here. Um, same with here on the front. This logo is actually a little smaller, but it was so small that I wasn't going to be able to put the rhinestones on there um, and have it still be <laughs> readable at all. So I measured this to figure out how big I could make that logo to be able to um, put it on with the Cricut and make it just a little bigger. So yes, the logos are done in rhinestones, but they are not the original logo to the machine. I did have to fudge those a little bit just to be able to rhinestone them. But of course I wanted to <laughs> rhinestone the baby lock logos. Like that's so much fun. 
Um, another question that I get is that the thread must snag um, on the rhinestones. But if you look at where the thread path is, it never touches the rhinestones. The thread path is across the top of the machine, but it doesn't touch the top of the machine. And then it tucks in here. This is not covered in rhinestones. It goes in the channels. There are no rhinestones in the channels of the machine. Um, and so there's no, there's nothing, nothing for the thread to get caught on. Um, so I don't have any issues with the thread getting caught. That's not a problem or an issue. It's not a thing at all. Um, the machine doesn't have an automatic thread cutter. So I do need to have scissors with me to be able to cut my threads. So another question that I get is about the bed of the machine right here, um, which is a really common question because people think that um, because this bed of the machine is super sparkly, that it must also be a bunch of rhinestones on there. Um, this is actually not rhinestones. This right here is um, several layers that I built up. So the very bottom layer is um, a metallic-y, shiny blue paint um, because the baby lock um, blue that I have on the rhinestones. Um, so it's a blue paint, a couple layers of that, and then on top of that is several layers of um, uh, glitter paint. So it's big unicorn glitter, chunky flaky glitter paint that I put several layers on top of that. And then once that dried, I put a couple layers of shellac on top of that because the big chunky glitter paint, honestly, I've had it for a while, it's a couple of years old. So <laughs> it, um, it, it, I, I should have bought new paint. I cheaped out and I didn't. So it was a little chunkier than I wanted. So I sanded it down after it was all dry to try to get a smoother finish on top and then put a couple layers of shellac on top of that to get as smooth as possible. It's, uh, it's smooth, but with like ridges on there. So it's not perfect, um, but it's, there's nothing to catch. Um, and speaking of catching, because people wonder if like the fabric is going to snag, um, they're, the rhinestones are not barbed. Like I can run my hand across the machine and I'm not cutting or catching anything on my fingers. They're faceted, um, which means that they have those edges, but they're, they're smooth enough. It feels great. It feels really like you get that kind of text, um, tactile from touching it, but there's nothing like sharp. Like if I run my sweater, nothing's getting caught on here. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay. When you're making a zipper bag, always make sure at this step that you open your zipper at least part way because otherwise you will not be able to turn it right side out. I can mess everything else up on this bag. That one gets me rah, frustrated if I forget. Okay. I'm going to pin this. We're almost done with our bag. Um, and we are nearing the end on our story here of make of the, the blinged out baby lock. Um, so she is now an ambassador in her own right. Um, I took her to Hamilton, Missouri with me, um, at Missouri star and she, they, uh, took some video of her, um, and put her on their Instagram where a lot of people had a lot to say about her. She, um, she brings a lot of people a lot of joy, but she confuses some people as well, which um, I can understand that. She's definitely not for everybody's taste. Um, that's okay. That's okay. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, this was a machine that um, I got during a time that was really hard for me. Um, and then a year later, I, you know, was struggling again with basically the same, the anniversary of that hard time. Um, and she brought me joy. And now I bring her places and she brings other people joy. She went to Hamilton with me. Um, she's been to Chicago. She has been, gosh, where else have I taken her? Um, she went to AccuQuilt with me. Um, and actually for the AccuQuilt dye launch, I then rhinestone covered an AccuQuilt Go Me, a fully functioning, go me cutter um just covered in rhinestones uh for this one the top i don't know how you can see that but the top actually says the accuquilt logo across the top here in green rhinestones and then i made the accuquilt logo on the sides 
um, nice and big. So she usually hangs up, she usually hangs out one shelf higher and this machine usually hangs out here unless they're traveling with me um, or for whatever other reason they're out and about. Um, and people love hanging out with her because she's fun and she brings joy. Now, some people think that I should have donated the machine since um, I wasn't using her. She was just sitting in a corner for a year. Um, and that's valid. If you have a machine that's sitting in a corner that you're not using and you can find a good group or charity or even a person who wants to learn to quilt that you can donate the machine to, I think that's fantastic. Do it. Um, that just wasn't the destiny for this machine. The destiny for this machine was to become the most ridiculously <laughs> blinged out sewing machine um, currently in existence. Um, some people have said that they're going to do similar to their machines. And if that's you, I hope you do. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun having a machine that's covered in rhinestones. It really is. Um, she's, a, she's a showstopper and people love seeing her. Um, I have since blinged the AccuQuilt Go Me, which was super fun. Um, and I have also blinged out um, a iron for Aliso, which the iron for Aliso now belongs to them. They own that. But when I did the blinged iron for the Aliso, I um, ordered myself some extra rhinestones so that I can bling out an iron for myself as well. So I'll do a video on how to bling things like the Gomi, like the machine, like the Aliso, um, for anyone who's interested in adding some ridiculous sparkle to things that don't necessarily need sparkle, but um, as long as the sparkle doesn't hurt anything, it's great. So I have, um, I blinged out the pens and then three machines. Will I continue to bling things? I don't know. Will I sell the things that I bling? Um, I did to Aliso. I, they did pay me to bling the, the, the iron for them. Um, but so far, that's really the only ones that I've... Um, and it's just because I love them so much. I've known the folks at Aliso for years, and they are wonderful, wonderful humans. Um, and I enjoy working with them. And so I, I agreed to do that for them. Um, and the iron got so much love in their booth at Quilt Market and at Quilt Festival, which is where people got to see that. So um, I bet I, this is not a business of me blinging machines. It's not something that I'm interested in doing, but I'll happily show you how to do it if it's something that you want to do. All right, we're almost done with our bag here. I'm going to cut these and then turn the right side out. If you have any other questions about the blinged out machine or things that I've blinged out, um, feel free to leave those in the comments and I will... Um, see if I can get you some answers on how it all works. I do, I don't know if I mentioned this, when I sew with her, I do like to use metallic thread just because I think that's funny. Um, <laughs> if you're using a sparkly machine, I feel like you need to have sparkly thread, right? Uh, it does make sometimes for some tedious sewing because decorative threads aren't really meant for piecing. You have to sew a little slower and um, a little more carefully when you're using decorative threads. So that might just be me being silly, um, which the whole thing is pretty silly. So I accept it. Um, anyway, so here is my finished bag. Um, she might be a little uh, inside out with a zipper to figure this out, what I did here. Um, <laughs> the zipper's inside out. Uh. All right, so here is my finished little zippered pouch um, to prove to you that yes, it is a fully functioning machine and I can and do actually sew with her, though usually not here in the studio, usually out and about. One other question that I didn't answer is how much did it cost to cover her in rhinestones? And I don't have those exact numbers or how many rhinestones on there are on there. Um, I can send you some photos and you're welcome to count for yourself, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I can tell you that the cost of the rhinestones is actually more than the cost of the machine. Granted, this is um, a beginner model of Baby Lock, so it is an inexpensive, relatively machine. Um, but the the rhinestones 
costs more than the, the machine itself. So technically, I guess I doubled the value of the machine by doing this, although I don't know if that's <laughs> what I would recommend to add value to your machine. That's up to you. Friends, that is the story of the machine and answers to all the questions plus a little bit of sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Make sure you're subscribed because while I'm not usually sewing on this machine, I usually am sharing fun sewing tips and tricks. So friends, that's it for today. I'll see you right here real soon. Bye for now.